Barbie movie, the world's favorite blonde bombshell is suddenly offered a choice. A classic high heel pump or a Birkenstock sandal. She, of course, chooses the pump. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The first one. The high heel. Let's just say that the Matrix looks very different here in 2023. But because of that choice, we're treated to this. The moment that broke the internet. Barbie stepping out of her heels and retaining that iconic foot shape. But while that step broke the internet, would it also break your ankles? I don't think actual human feet are meant to work that way. So in honor of the new Barbie movie, I want to see whether she made the right move here. When offered the option of wearing a high heel or a flat sandal, what's the right choice for your overall health? Today, we're finding our footing to determine once and for all whether high heels are as bad for your feet as people tend to assume, or whether there might be some secret health benefits to walking around in a perpetual point. And on the flip side, are flat shoes like sandals any better? Because let me tell you, no one wants chronic foot pain Barbie. No one. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the over-analysis Barbie. At this point, I think we're all aware of who Barbie is, right? Blonde, loves pink, owns a beach house in Malibu, sure. But, do you know her origins? I bet not, because our toy overlords definitely don't want you to find out. See, the original Barbie would be this, the Build Lily doll. A doll based on a German comic strip that, uh, well, just by looking at a couple of these panels, let's just say that you don't need to understand what the German is saying here to get a sense of Lily's vibe. In the Barbie movie, you get this scene about Ken staying the night. I thought I might stay over tonight. You do what? I'm actually not sure. Let's just say that Lily here would have had some very specific activities planned. Anyway, what started overseas as a risque gag gift found its home with American children when Ruth Handler, the co-founder of Mattel, bought one for her daughter. The doll was an instant hit at the house and bing bang boom, Barbara Millicent Roberts was born. But uh, she prefers to go by her nickname, Barbie for short. Barbie quickly became the original hashtag girl boss, teaching women of all ages that they could take on any job they wanted. Doctor, Nobel Prize winner, Supreme court justice mermaid it's only too bad that barbie never stopped to show us what happens when the other shoe drops i accidentally girl bossed too hard and now i have a real job with real responsibilities too real tiktok too real anyway speaking of shoes dropping let's get to that question at hand at feet i suppose the birkenstock pump debate have we all been brainwashed to think that high heels are only for aesthetics i mean party goers have been ditching their painful stilettos to walk home barefoot for decades heck our very own amy walked barefoot through vegas after her three-hour Tay-Tay experience rather than keep her heels on. But is the true shame coming from that walk of shame? The poor foot health? Has Barbie's permanent point been trying to help us all along? Or should we be going flat and never going back? Now, if you're new to the world of heels, you might be surprised that they didn't actually start off as footwear focused on fashionable females. In fact, they started off as a tool for soldiers riding their horses. The gap between the toe and the heel actually helped riders lock their feet into the saddle stirrups. From there, heels became popular throughout Europe, eventually becoming a symbol of male power. I'm serious about that. King Louis XIV eventually made it so that only nobility could wear heels, and how high those heels were reflected how high of a class you were. Maybe that's why Ken is still just a Ken here. He hasn't harnessed the power of the lift yet. But now, let's look at the data. Are heels actually good for your feet? Well, it's not as easy of a question as it might initially sound. Talk to anyone who's head over heels for heels, and they'll be quick to tell you that they're not all made equally. There's a whole Pokedex full of different kinds of heels out there. You have your ultra high stilettos that turn you into a literal skyscraper, as well as those insane no-heel heels, all the way down to your maybe possibly a heel kitten heels. Meow. So, for our non-shoe addicts, let's just break down what those names actually mean. A kitten heel is the shortest of the short heels, covering anything below two inches. It's the kind of shoe that makes you wonder if you're really wearing a heel or finally just standing up straight. Just above those are low heels, reaching between two to three inches in height. Then you have yourself mid-heels that fall between three and four inches, and finally we're in the high heel territory. Anything between four to eight inches in size. You can actually manage to find shoes that go higher, including some that are almost fully vertical, which match really nicely with this clutch, as well as this hefty podiatrist's bill. That being said, no matter who you are or why you decided to slip on that pair of heels, they are gonna rock your body to its core. Literally. Strapping on a pair of stilettos turns the simple act of walking into a major challenge for the human body. As the height of the heel rises, the length of your Achilles tendon actually shortens. You know, that little string that connects your calf muscle to your heel bone? Yeah, that thing becomes super small, which is no good because it's built for 
an extended stretch. Keeping it short for long periods of time reduces its flexibility, ultimately resulting in it becoming tighter and shorter. Looking past the tendon, high heels force the muscles of your legs to flex, which gives the wearer an instant booty lift. Well, that seems like it should be a good thing, it actually comes at a severe cost. Joint stress. Your chest and pelvis are suddenly forced to sit forward, which means that your butt gets pushed back. This shifts your entire center of gravity and changes the normal angle of your leg, causing the front of your body to try and fall forward while making the knees work double time to keep you from face planting into the ground. That struggle between you and gravity means that 90% of your body weight is now focused over the balls of your feet, instead of being spread evenly across the larger surface area of your full foot. And because your muscles are now working super hard to hold you upright, it becomes harder for them to also propel you forward. So in total, high heels gives us straining muscles, knee pressure, and short, stiff tendons. It's not looking all that great for Barbie's footwear of choice. So are there any actual benefits to wearing heels? It turns out that the answer is yes. In fact, a 2015 study found that regular high heel use increased ankle strength. The study found that balancing on the balls of your feet all day is basically the equivalent of CrossFit for your ankles. The women in the study would wear 10 centimeters or 4 inch heels 3 times a week or more for multiple hours a day. And with each passing year that they wore the heels, their ankle strength increased. It's pretty crazy, right? Just imagine all of us now walking around in high heels training up our ankles. I might have skipped a leg day, but you know what day I never skip? Ankle day. Some guy tries to attack us in a dark alley and we whip out some fancy ankle moves. That right there, that's the good news. Here comes the bad news. It only worked for three years. Yeah, believe it or not, but year after year after year, the muscles in and around the ankle area got stronger. Until year four, when suddenly that muscle strength took a nosedive. After four years, they found that their ankle muscles started getting weaker, leaving them more prone to injury. You see, the consistent heel use resulted in the bodies developing muscle imbalances, resulting in more falls and overall injuries across the rest of their body. In short, high heels are terrible. So then obviously Barbie would be better off choosing the flats, right? <gasps> Nope, the twist here is that wearing shoes that are completely flat, like slides, or yes, even some of those casual Birkenstocks aren't any better. Flat shoes typically have themselves very little protection from the ground below, meaning that when your foot hits the floor, there's very little there to absorb the shock. As a result, the thin, long ligament in your foot known as the plantar fascia ends up taking a lot of the shock. Over time, this repeated stress on your ligament causes it to inflame, which can lead to conditions like plantar fasciitis, where you can have a lot of chronic stabbing pain throughout your foot. So my apologies to Sophia and I, Guard, but your favorite shoe choice there is just as guilty as the pump. So clearly we've created a bit of a dilemma here. The heels are too high and causing severe muscle issues, but the flats are too low, doing literally nothing to protect our feet from the pounding of the pavement. What we need is some sort of a Goldilocks solution, something that's just right. And let me tell you, it does exist, but it requires us talking about the most important factor in the shoe game, your arch. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's the inside curve of your foot. According to podiatrists, the shoes that that you ultimately choose to wear should have a slight heel to better support your foot's natural arch. This in turn will put less strain on the Achilles tendon that we talked about earlier. In fact, there's actually a test to find you your perfect lift. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the perfect heel formula. Or at least I present it to you after I put you to the test, the subscribe button test. What other channel on YouTube is gonna definitively prove what the best soap is and then follows it up with a short where we rip through a $200 pair of sneakers? Who else is exposing Victoria a secret and then explaining why you should be absolutely terrified of mannequins. By subscribing to Style Theory, you help support this channel and all the hard-working Barbies out there that help make it happen. So hit that subscribe button and proudly say that you are a theorist Barbie. All right, let's go play with our feet. The so-called perfect heel height formula was created by podiatrist Emma Supple, and it promises to pair you with your perfect pair of heels. So how's this formula work? Well, you're essentially measuring the mobility of this one little ankle bone here, your talus bone. According to Emma, quote, basically if the talus tilts downward when you're holding your leg out straight and relaxing your foot, then you have a lot of mobility and can wear higher heels with ease. But if your talus doesn't tilt, then you'll be more comfortable in flatter shoes. Flatter shoes give a right angle to the ground and don't require as much movement from the foot. So now grab yourself a friend and get to measuring. Luckily, I have myself my built-in friend, my wife, Steph. I mean, she quite literally promised to be my partner in all things till I die. Though I gotta admit, I'm not sure she knew it meant measuring my feet on 
camera. Anyway, once you have someone willing to get up close and personal with your stank feet, you'll just need to find yourself a chair, a pencil, and a ruler. Just pause this video while you go find the tools, alright? Great. First, you'll need to sit on the chair with one leg extended out in front of you. Remember, you're gonna want to have your shoes off for all of this. Gently relax your foot so that it tips forward without actively pointing your toe. Have your friend then line up the pencil with the ball of your foot, so that way it points perpendicular to the floor. Basically, you want the pencil to make a right angle to the ground. By measuring the distance between the tip of the pencil and your heel, you'll be able to tell what heel height is meant for you. It is possible for your foot not to tip, thereby making the measurement zero. That is totally fine. All that means is that you have yourself a flat arch, and so flatter shoes like Vans or ballet flats are gonna be a match made in shoe heaven for you. So what about the rest of us? Well, if your foot measures at one inch, then a shoe with a one inch heel is gonna feel the best. If you measure two inches, then you're gonna want a two inch heel. I think you get the picture. This is not a complicated equation. Anything three inches and above though rounds down to just three inches. Basically, podiatrists don't want you going any higher than that. So what does all of this mean for our leading lady Barbie? Well, it turns out that her affinity for heels might not be as unhealthy as we initially assumed. Sure, her heels are way too high in those shoes, but she just has herself a more flexible talus than most, thereby making a higher heel a better fit for her unique arch. She just needs to dial it down by a couple of inches. In the end though, all of this shoe talk tells us that footwear isn't a red pill, blue pill scenario. It isn't a binary choice. There are millions of shoes out there, and the one that's right for you isn't the tallest or the sleekest, it's about finding a fit that meets the specific needs of your body. Speaking of bodily needs, it's time to talk about our sponsor for today's episode, Factor. Not only does your body need a well-shaped shoe able to support your uniquely shaped arch, it also needs itself some fuel, food that's gonna keep it going every day. And with Factor, a healthy, fresh, fully prepared meal is just two minutes away. Factor is a meal delivery service that brings fully prepared food right to your doorstep that can be ready in a matter of minutes. My days right now have been slammed with a lot of shoots, just back to back to back. I mean, look at my calendar right now. It is disgusting. There is no room to breathe, let alone prepare myself a good meal. But with Factor, it is literally the only way I'm able to get lunch these days, especially when it comes to a healthy lunch. I just pop upstairs to the kitchen, I heat one of these bad boys up for two minutes, and it's immediately ready so I can roll into my next shoot, or my next meeting, or my next meeting about a shoot. And if you think Barbie is winning the accessory game, she has got nothing on Factor's huge selection of add-ons. Not only do they offer more than 34 meal options, you can also choose from more than 45 add-on options, rounding out your meal or just getting your snack on. And then there are those times where you're not in the mood for a full meal, which is the perfect time for their cold-pressed juices. Again, absolutely fresh and delicious and ready to go at the drop of a hat whenever you need it there. And all of that Factor goodness is available to you right now at 50% off. All you need to do is head over to Factor75.com and use the code STYLETHEORY50 to get yourself 50% off your first Factor box. The link is also in the top line of the description. That is F-A-C-T-O-R 75.com and then the code STYLETHEORY50 to get 50% off that first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring today's episode and as always remember my friends it's just a theory. A STYLETHEORY. Keep looking sharp.